told you guys in the past that I've made some of my greatest friends in prison, but I also have some really good friends that I've made on the streets where my life was in their hands at one point and their lives were in my hands at one point. But today I'm gonna tell you a story about a dude that to this day is solid in my heart and I love. We grew up together and you know who you are. Let's get into this video. America has always been fascinated with the mob, kingpins, crime. It's in movies, shows, history, and it's become culture. Crime and scandal from inmates in Alcatraz to John Gotti and Al Capone. But the United States has its own share of homegrown drug kingpins, mob bosses, and gangsters. This is Gangsters of America. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla, you already know. Subanse la suburban. Let's get this video on the road. Yeah. You know, I've had a pretty fucking interesting life. And I must say that through, through the years, yeah, I did get backstabbed a lot and I, I did get used a lot because I was a, I was a kid, immature, uh, a lot of trauma, drugs, you know, everything above. But now that I'm older and I see shit, it's helped me realize who my true friends are and who I really truly have a part in my heart for. And, you know, I was just talking to this dude the other day on the phone and you know, we were talking about when we were kids and it was crazy how many times we were out there, you know, marching, you know, walking from 59 down to Kedzie and 55th and then into Crown Town. And you know, when 59 first started, nobody was happy. <laughs> you know, Crown Town had been established for a very, very long time and they had already been out there from like the 80s. So they were very well established and they had a very, a pretty big fucking neighborhood. I mean, it was from Western all the way down to fucking St. Louis from 51st. So that's, that's a big, big, big territory, you know? And I remember when we used to drive to go, go look for them, they, we would eventually find somebody because it was such a big stretch and somebody was out. And when 59 first started, a lot of people weren't happy with the SD starting to branch on 59 because it was right smack in the middle of the hood of everybody. The Ambrose, the 2-6, the, the Kings, uh, I mean, you name it. I mean, they, they was all in that area and we were right smack in the middle. So we were pretty much went to war with everybody. And there was a few of us that were constantly on the street, constantly walking around, you know, pulling marches, uh, taking care of business, and, and that's just how it was. And so when we first started, the kings from Crown Town started looking for us a lot, a lot, and they started coming, coming and coming, and back in our days, we held our own, even though it was only like 12 of us. You know, it was a long summer with a lot of shootings, but we took care of business, and there was very, very few of us that actually did the work. All you other motherfuckers can say all the shit you wanna say, but in all reality, you know you didn't do shit for that neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> with that being said, you know, I was standing on 59th Street one night and it was dead winter time, it was freezing. And I was with this big, fat motherfucker that to this day, you know, he, he thinks he's hard just because he's, he's big. People don't realize just because you're big doesn't mean that you're tough or, or whatever, you know. Um, you know, he weighs like over 300 pounds. I think he's like six foot something, but he, he's, he's as soft as they come. <laughs> so let me get into the story, right? So that day, actually the kings from Crown Town and some from Little Village actually did a very, very calculated hit on 59. But they just didn't realize, we weren't ready for it, but we were lucky. It was me 
and that dude standing on 59 and Christiana. And we started walking towards Spalding. Well, at the time, you know, my other boy that was carrying the strap started walking across the street. There's an alley right on 59th Street that leads to Spalding, pretty much. I mean, it goes down, but he would always take the alley down and cut through through one of the boy's houses and, and end up in front of his house. That day, the kings from Crown Town, Little Village, did a very calculated hit because they drove five cars, all fully packed. One stopped on Christiana, one stopped on 59th, one stopped on Holman, the other one stopped right in the alley, and the other one stopped on Spalding. So that had us completely surrounded. I'm not gonna lie. That day, I saw my life flash through my eyes. Because as soon as they got out, they all had bats, they all had, uh, some of them had uh, golf clubs, some of them had pipes, and like two of them had pistols. They all got out. I mean, I'm talking about 20 plus guys. They all got out. So we started running. And I'll never forget, I look over, and that big fat dude that I'm talking about was running faster than me. <laughs> I'm like, how the fuck can that motherfucker run faster than me? And he was, he was gone. He actually left me in the fucking dust. He actually beat the kings that came out of Spalding and jumped out, he actually beat them and ran past Spalding, like past everybody. They caught me right in front of the, there's a fence with like, it was like a mechanic shop that was right on 59th and Spalding, there was a mechanic shop right on the corner. They caught me against that fence and surrounded me completely. And like I said, I'll never forget because I remember the, the guy that had the golf club, I remember the guy that had the pistol, I remember the guy that had the fucking pipe, I remember everybody in that circle that surrounded me and they were going to obviously hurt me. I don't know if they were gonna kill me or not, but I, uh, one thing I know for sure is that I did see my life flash between my eyes and I, I knew that something very, very bad was gonna happen to me and I would probably die that day. And my last little kind of faith of hope or whatever you want to call it, I screamed my boy's name twice. Why well, I screamed it like really loud. <laughs> I was really scared. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I hate it when I hear all these stories of all these like tough guys that pretend that they've never been scared or never had fear. And and you know what? Why do you have to lie? That, that's what makes you actually tough, is that you've been through situations that make you scared, that make you, you know, fear for your life, that it, it, it makes you like grow as, you know, I guess a gangster you might want to say, but if you say that you weren't scared and, and, and yeah, there is people like that, don't get me wrong, I've been locked up with some people that those motherfuckers deserve to be in prison and never let out because those motherfuckers are sick fucks. Most people have experienced fear and, and every kind of form you could possibly think of. I don't care, it's, it's a human nature. Well, I was screaming his name off the top of my lungs because I really didn't want to die then. I had a, some shit to live for. He came out the fucking alley right on 59th, that alley that's in between Christiana and Spalding, like a motherfucking gangster. I'll never forget the scene as it plays over and over in my head and I'll, I'll just never forget it. You know what I mean? Because it, 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 he came out like a fucking, like a cowboy. You know, and started shooting. He shot two times towards Christiana. Then he shot two times towards Spalding. Then he shot towards me. Everybody started running. Everybody, it was like chaos. You know what I mean? And that gave me the two little seconds that I needed to pretty much run and get away with my life. You know, and he just kept going. One thing I have to say about my boy, man, since we were kids, he always took care of business, man. And I don't think, I don't think people really understand how much we did and how unappreciated a lot of these older guys were and how they treated us, you know, leaving us out there in the hood when they were out at nightclubs and stuff like that. A lot of us lost our life. A lot of us got murdered out there that put in the work while these guys were out, you know, showing off and, and, and doing things that maybe we would have wanted to, you know, do. This is why my channel is so important and, and I am gonna fucking say it till I'm blue. Don't gangbang, don't waste your time out there on the streets. 
Don't waste your time, your life, years. Remember, if you get locked up, your whole family pays for it. It's not just you. If you get killed, your whole family pays for it. It's not just you. Even your friends, your boys, everybody pays for it, man. We lost a lot of good brothers. A lot of good brothers. Not just in killings, in prison, drug addiction, everything. If you really wanna make a change, you start leading by example and actually start pushing the guys to do better things and be positive. That's a real true fucking leader. You get down with them and you do it with them. It is what it is, man. You know, my name's JC. I am Ron the Strong. Don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, you only have one life to live. Might as well live it out here, free with your family. Hey, and just doing good stuff. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.